Rogers Show, starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his golden palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. Well, riders, Trigger here is raring to go, so let's get started with today's story. to trap beaver all of a sudden, Mr. Wilkins. Well, the animals are getting scarce, and Paradise Valley residents are complaining about all the heavy spring floods. That's right, Dale. You get enough of those beaver working for you in the rivers, it gives you some protection against spring floods. Well, that's okay with me, because I think those little animals are too cute to be killed anyway. How about some coffee? You're talking me into that. What are you studying, Pat? Take a look. Looks like just a drawing of a tree to me. Well, that's just what it is. It's a family tree chart. I'm studying here where the Grimshaws merged with the Bradys. Only the Bradys kind of lost out on the deal. You know that you might be a direct descendant of the kings of Ireland? Yeah? How'd you know? Who's putting these notices up around town? Hello, oh, Joe. Al. Mr. Wilkins, I'd like you to meet the Burnside brothers. They're trappers from up the canyon. This is Mr. Wilkins, the game warden here. Some laws always keep them folks from making a living, and we're fed up with it. This is what we think of you and your laws. Yeah, you can't do that. That's government property. That's a laugh. You're making a mistake, Hal. He's only doing his duty. It's another one, Hal. No, you don't, Joe. Right, Joe. Send us, Rogers. Now, wait a minute. There'll be no rough house in the Eureka Cafe, because I got to clean it up. On your feet. You all right, Mr. Wilkins? Yeah, I'm all right, Roy. Now get out of here, both of you, and stay out. And take another look at that sign on the way. And don't let me catch you with any beaver pelts. Nice going, Pat. You know the Irish king should be proud of you, or blood will tell. Thanks, Roy. But some people won't do to get out of a little work. Thinking. <laughs> well, I'll be clawed and swallowed by a panther. Look, right here at the beginning of my family tree. Looks like you're descended from a family called B-A-B-O-O-N. <laughs> baboon! That spells baboon, Pat. <laughs> and I spent $10 of my hard-earned money for a monkey's pedigree. <laughs> like you said, blood will tell. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Hey, when are you two going to be back? We won't be going along, Pat. We're just riding out to the ranch to check around. No. And listen, when we come back, don't let me catch you swinging from the chandelier eating a banana. <laughs> oh, now, Dale, please forget about that family tree chart. It's a fake anyway. I don't think you'll be spending any more money on these charts, Dale. Whoa! <laughs> come and get your gear! Old Pete the Peddler's here! Well, I see Pete the Peddler's in town again. Yeah, and that's putting temptation right in Pat's way, stopping here. Oh, I don't think so. As I remember, he's a distant relative of Pat's. Seems like there's some kind of a feud going on. In that case, he'll never get a plug nickel out of Pat. <laughs> Anybody else? We got pins, pans, needles, dresses, candy, coats, clocks, brooms. I just got to take another look at this. Baboons. Monkeys. I just can't believe it. Have a look around, boys. Don't overlook those, friends. Pete will be right back. <laughs> Patrick Brady, how is my dear cousin Pat? You listen to me, Peter Grimshaw Brady. I reckon I gotta serve you if it's food you want. But if it's being my cousin you want, there ain't no law says I gotta recognize you as kinfolk. What have you got here? None of your business. And if I'm descended from a certain family, I can see why. What do you want? Bananas and cream. Oh. Bananas? Oh. <laughs> Seems to be worried about something. Yeah, he does. What's the matter, Bullet? <laughs> 
Wilkins. Shot through the heart. I can make a good guess who did it. They got Wilkins. I told you we should have hit the body. That dog of Rogers led him right to him. So what? They got nothing on us. Well, let's go. We don't want them to find us here. Not just yet. Stick around till they leave. They may keep tracking through the cabin. Hey, the dog spotted us. Come I'll on. I'll take care of him. Don't be a fool. You're inviting trouble if Rogers hears that shot. Come on. Well, we better notify the corn. Hey, where is Bullet? I don't know. Bullet! investigating on his own. He sure has. Remember this jacket? Yes, I do. One of the Burnside brothers wore it into the restaurant this morning. Well, we better get Wilkins back to town. Take this to the sheriff for evidence. This is the jacket one of the Burnside brothers wore, all right. There's no doubt about it, Sheriff. And you know a woman's eye for detail, especially for clothes. Well, let me clinch it for you. Sheriff, you asked Roy and Dale if they ain't positive it was one of the Burnsides. They've already said they are. What are you trying to prove, Pat? Well, when we catch them low-down rattlers, you're going to have to prove this in court. So I hereby agree to model the evidence. Look here, Bullet. Please, Bullet. I'm just trying to prove a point. Take it easy, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Pat, you better take that jacket off. Bullet has some bad memories about it. Yeah. Sheriff? I reckon you ain't gonna get me to do any modeling after all. No siree, not me. Well, who asked you to in the first place? Well, I only volunteered my services as a good citizen. Well, why don't you volunteer your services as a good cook and get yourself back in that restaurant? It's time for lunch. Well, okay. But I sure ain't gonna be left out of chasing down them bushwhackers. <laughs> Sheriff, the doc took these bullets out of Wilkins' body. With a 44-40 steel jacket in. They weren't hunting small animals with those bullets. No, that makes me think the Burnside brothers have been in the poaching business for a long time. That's what I think too, Dale. And now, killing a federal man, get the boys rounded up. Okay, sure. The sooner we get started, the better. You know, those trappers aren't going to be easy to track down. That's right. They know this country pretty well. They're clever, all right, but we'll find them. Wait a minute now, Roy. Where do you think we ought to start? We better start at their cabin. They probably won't be there, but we might find out something. Are you going to take Pat with you, Sherry? I'd rather not. We've got enough trouble without having him and Nellie Bell along. <laughs> That'll make him as mad as a bear with a sore nose. Yeah, Pat fancies himself quite a detective. <laughs> yeah. Detective. Now, what good are these pelts anyway? It's again the law to sell them now. I got an idea where we can get rid of them. Maybe at a higher price. When things get scarce, they always bring in more money. Yeah, I see what you mean. Maybe we can do okay for ourselves. Bananas and cream. Hi, Pat. You still studying that chart? Oh, that Peter Grimshaw Brady's got me twisted up like a ponderosa pine root, calling me cousin. And you too, Bullet. It ain't enough that Peter Grimshaw gives me all the trouble. You have to turn on me too. Shame on you. Now, don't you pick on Bullet. You ask for it. Bullet. Don't you know me when I ain't myself? <laughs> like now, I'm wearing a chef's hat and an apron. Does that make me different? <laughs> Don't tempt him too far, Pat. Well, I was only trying to teach him a few friendly facts of life. Otherwise, he's liable to grow up more ignorant than a, than a Grimshaw. Where's Roy? Oh, Roy, he went out riding for a spell. 
Oh, now, Dale, don't take me for no dumb Rocky Mountain canary. I ask you a fair question, and I expect a fair answer. Where's Roy? Well, if you must know, he went with the sheriff and the posse after the Burnside brothers. Well, mustard and custard. What am I, the run of the litter? My gosh, you know very well that there's no posse complete without me and Nellie Bell. Even though the sheriff don't think so. deeper into the woods. They could be hiding any place. They know this country pretty well, you know. Well, one thing's for sure. They won't show their faces around here again, and that puts them right out of business. Maybe. I noticed they've taken all their pelts and traps with them. Here. Where are them beaver pickers? He's just a little late, Pat. He's always late. Well, doggone it, it was that no good cousin of mine, Pete. He, he hogged the road and kept me from getting here. Now, just cool off, Dimples. I'm afraid we're all too late. Let's get back to town. Roy, look at Bullet. I've never seen him so restless. I think he'd like to be out chasing after those rattlers who gave him such a bad time. Well, if you ask me, he'd be better than the sheriff and his posse. They're out searching that closed area, and they haven't found a thing yet. Hey, you are. Nobody will ever know you're carrying those pelts. Hide them good, Joe. Yeah, it does look pretty innocent, don't it? Makes a good traveling hideout. <laughs> Just make sure you bring the money back after you sell them. Yeah, we don't want no slip-ups on that, Pete. Boys, Pete's word is good all up and down this valley. You sure you know where to sell them? There's a law against it, you know. Friends, Pete knows how to travel inside and outside of the law. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> well, there'll be more when you get back. No law's gonna stop me and Joe from carrying on our business. And there ain't no law gonna stop old Pete from anything. Don't forget to bring us back plenty of grub and supplies. We ain't got much up here. Gentlemen, when old Pete comes back, you boys will be eating like a feast. I reckon we can trust him. We ain't got much choice, Joe. Knocking off that government man kind of makes us stay put. Yeah, except for setting out our traps. Let's go ahead and cook up some grub. Okay. $1,000 reward for information leading to the apprehension of Joe and Hal Burnside. The Bureau was going to send a couple of agents in, but I told them that me and my deputies knew this country pretty well. 
Well, Dale and I will do everything we can to help, Sheriff. Yeah, you can count on me and Nellie Bell, too. I'd rather not. Now, just a cotton-picking minute, just because Nellie Bell... Do you hear what I hear, Pat? Sounds like your favorite cousin's in town. Cousin? I'd rather be related to a monkey. <laughs> Well, howdy, howdy, folks. I've brought the treasures of the Golden West to your very door. How's peddling, Pete? Not so good, not so bad, Miss Dale. Nobody's got any money. Seems like everybody wants credit. Here's a chance for you to make a thousand bucks. A thousand dollars? That's a lot of money for a peddle, ain't it? I could buy myself an automobile, and then I could beat my cousin Pat on any road. <laughs> There's an opportunity to earn it right there. Sheriff, if I hear anything, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Tell you what, Pete. Give me twenty dollars a piece for those pelts. Twenty dollars? Why, that's dishonest. You know that they're worth a hundred dollars each. When it's against the law, the merchandise is cheaper. Yeah, but people want them and they sell for more. They're harder to sell. The handler might go to jail. Twenty dollars a piece. Take it or leave it. I'll never be able to explain this. Well, all right, but I gotta have some supplies too. Give you a good break on those. You'd better, you dishonest old thief. Gee, thanks for helping me with the packages, Roy. That's all right, Pat. You know, I don't see why the sheriff didn't want me to help track down them Burnside brothers, or at least Nellie Bell. I'll speak to him about it. <gasps> no, on second thought, maybe you better not. He ain't been too friendly with me since I backed into it. As I remember it. You crushed his hat and sent him to the doctor. Well, I paid him for it, didn't I? Did you? Well, I was meaning to, but seriously, I ain't seen enough money to fill a knot hole in a toothpick. Well, I'm going to take Bullet out for a run. He's been restless all day. Now, wait a minute. If you're going to take Bullet out for a run, I'm going to take Nellie Bell, too. Where? Well, to make it easy, we'll go in the same direction that you and Bullet go. Well, let's go. Go on, Bullet. <laughs> Selling first. Besides, I brought you plenty of supplies. Let's have the money. Oh, yes, the money. Now start dragging some of that stuff back in the tunnel while me and Joe load up another batch of pelts for you to get rid of. Glad to oblige you, boys. Joe. You know, I think that Stephen Peddler's double crossing us. So do I. He can't be getting less for those pelts. He's got to be getting more. And keeping a difference for himself. Let's get rid of them. There are plenty of supplies now. I got a better idea. First, give me a hand with these. What are you up to? I'm going to put you in the wagon. Then when you get to town, you can see where he goes and what he does. See if he's cheating us, huh? And if anything happens, you can bring the wagon back by the old road. Hey, Pete. Never mind that stuff. We'll put it away. You better head for town with this new load. And try to get a better price this time. I'll try my best, boys. Nellie Bell here. Bullet and I are going to do some tracking. We'll be in rough country. Don't you worry about Nellie Bell. She'll track right along. Pete Rogers, drop your guns. Both of them. You two dimples. Call off your dog. Hurry up or I'll shoot him. Come here, Bullet. Come on, Bullet. Get off your horse. Get out of that jeep. Get inside the cabin. And if either one of you stick your head out of the window or the door, I'll blast you.
Oh, hello, Miss Dale. Still got your eye on that $1,000 reward? Mighty tempting, ain't it? I wish I knew where those rattlers were. Matter of fact, I wish I knew where Roy and Pat have disappeared to. I'm worried. You figuring on going to see the sheriff? Yes, I was thinking about it. Miss Dale. You know, a fella's got to work a long time to make $1,000, ain't he? Yes, he does. Maybe I'll go in with you and see the sheriff. Maybe I've got some news for him. Get no way. Hold it, Sheriff. Anybody make a move, she'll go next. You'll never get away with this, Joe. If I look back and see anyone of you follow me, it's the last time you see Dale Evans alive. Start driving. your horses. We'll follow them, but we'll have to be careful. Take care of him. moment, Sheriff, while I unwind the sidewinder. <laughs> oh! Hi, Pat. Oh, Dimple. What you oh. doing? Hi, Roy. Dale. Oh! <laughs> hey, what have you got there? I sent away to a different place for a new set of them family tree charts and... Oh. And what, Pat? Dale, I'm really worried now says practically the same thing. Just look at here. Brady, Grimshaw, Grimshaw, Brady. And uh, B-A-B-O-O-N. Oh, Dale. I wouldn't be too worried, Pat. You know, these family trees aren't always right. Hi, <laughs> Pat. Got a package here for you. Oh, yeah, Wally? A package for me? Well, gee whiz, who'd send me a package? I don't know. My gosh. <laughs> I wonder what's in it. Why don't you open it and find out? Open it? Yeah, that's a good idea. Gee whiz, I feel just as happy as a little boy with his first new pair of long britches. <laughs> gee whiz, it looks like one of those treasure chests or something. Here we go. Hello, Cousin Pat. Don't you know me? I'm one of the family. Happy trail. 